Alright, today I'll be giving you a tutorial on how to use Sunriser. Now, Sunriser is a virtual analog synthesizer, just like Arctic Keys or Analog Synth Pro. And they wanted to stand out more, so they packed this app with a bunch of features, um, some you probably never even heard of, such as a super saw wave or a cross delay effect. But um, I'll get into that throughout the video. Also, the oscillator section is quite confusing and there's some memorizing involved. But after you get through that, it should be quite simple to use. Now, they're kind of slow on updates. It was updated in January of 2012 and they haven't updated it since. But I just wanted to go over it. Okay, so let's get into this app. Now you can see your keyboards at the bottom of the screen. Over here are your pitch and your modulation wheels. Your pitch will be on the left side and your modulation wheel will be on the right side. On top of that you see three buttons, A plus B, A and B. So when you, uh, actually this is what makes the synthesizer very interesting and fun to use. A will be bank A and B will be bank B. So if I have A selected, you can see on, on the screen that every knob and fader can be adjusted. Now, this allows me to adjust the oscillator, the filter, envelope, LFO, and amp settings. And what's cool about it is you can switch in between the banks. Say right now this is all bank A, and you save all these knobs and faders, you can say as a preset. And when I select bank B, now they're totally completely different settings. So it's cool because when you're playing like a live performance, you can actually switch in between the banks, uh, giving you more control. Uh, and more variety of what you can do. A plus B is, it allows you to morph the groups. So as you can see, you can copy B to A or you can copy A to B. Okay. Um, next to that is a hold button, which when you press down a note, it holds the note down. Chord gives you kind of like a chord sound, but uh, if you can hear, when I press a note, it gives you kind of like a chord sound. But I think it's more like a unison. It gives you extra voices. So you could think of that as unison. This is your oscillator 1, oscillator 2, filter, envelope, LFO, and your amp. I'm going to go over the oscillators first because that's where the confusing parts are. Um, for your oscillator, you can see you get your standard triangle, your square, uh, your saw waveforms, and as well as the waveform I mentioned earlier, which is the super saw waveform. Now you can think of a super saw waveform as seven oscillators playing together with the tune. That's literally how it sounds like. Now what's confusing is uh, the waveform you select over here, depending on this waveform, your width and your mix knobs act differently. So if I have super saw selected, the width and mix form will act differently as if I had saw selected. So when I have super saw selected, what the width does is it controls the depth of the tune. And the mix controls um, the volume of the sound that's being detuned. Now, if I have something like a square or a saw or a triangle waveform selected, the width doesn't do that anymore. The width would control a sub oscillator sound, which plays the sound an octave lower. The mix would be the same. Oscillator 2 applies the same. The, the width and the mix knob and the waveforms, they do the same as oscillator 1. Um, what's differently is you have this octave button here. You can raise the octave by one or by two. And here are your semi and your sense. These knobs are for uh, adjusting, transposing the semitones. A semi will allow you to transpose a tone up and down by 12 semitones. Sense allows you to do the same but more precisely, which is one semitone. So a good way to remember it is sense. You can think of sense as in like pennies, like one cent. So that's how I remember it. Over here is your multi section or your multi section. This allows you to control the detune. Um, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. There are two buttons here. This is a sync button and a zero to filter two button here. When you have the sync button, it syncs your oscillator two to oscillator one. Now here's the part you have to remember. It only works is if oscillator 2 is using a saw or a square, square waveform. So if you're not using that waveform, it won't be affected. Um, when you sync it together, what it means is basically these two oscillators will play at the same frequency and create more interesting sounds. The 0 to O to filter 2 
It sends a signal from oscillator 1 directly to filter 1 and oscillator 2 directly to filter 2. Okay, so it's more, it spits them up independently. Okay, let me go back to the multi. I just wanted to mention these two buttons before I get into this section here. So this allows you to adjust the detune. Um, the spread knob allows you to move the oscillators up 12 semitones to create like more expressive sounds, it gives you kind of like more chordy sounds. And the side O allows you to adjust the volume of the oscillators and the spread. Okay, um, this mix section over here, this is to, you can pan the oscillators from oscillator 1 to oscillator 2. This is a ring modulation. Uh, this is your noise generator. And you can also adjust the color of the noise. Okay, now we're going to get into the filter section. The filter section is really standard. You have default 12 dB for two poles, or you can enable it as 24 dB for four poles by pressing this button. And it will turn yellow when it's enabled. You can select the filter you want to use. There's a standard low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, as well as extra filters like notch, comb, format, and etc. Notch is a filter that passes most frequencies without affecting them at all but then the frequencies that do get affected are lower to extremely low levels. Comb is a filter that adds a delay version of the signal. Um, format acts, it adds character to your sounds and it acts like a vocal track, so you end up with vocal-like sounds. All pass is simply, it just passes all the frequencies equally. Power LPF is a signal that's distorted and then filtered by a low-pass filter. Bypass just basically means your filter is off. So this would be the off switch for uh, your filter. You can select two different filters. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. If you see here, there's a route button. Uh, this allows you to pick how the filters will act with each other. Uh, there are two modes. First, the first one I have selected is the serial mode. And no, it's not a bowl of serial or it's not like a serial killer. <laughs> It's like zero as in numbers. So if you see there's a one and an arrow to two, that means um, the signal is routed from the first filter, filter one, and then to the second one, filter two. When I press route again, I could change it to the second mode, which is the parallel mode. So if you think about the parallel mode, it'll just act like uh, two parallel lines. The first line will be uh, filter one, the second line will be filter two. And then they'll just go uh, independently They'll, they won't cross by or cross in with each other. Okay, um, over here your, your standard frequency, your resonance, envelope amount. You can also adjust the attack, the decay and the sustain release for your envelope. Uh, track is a feature if you enable that. Uh, what it does is the cutoff frequency setting will be higher for the higher notes you play. And when it's off, that extra feature won't be there. Down here are your LFO settings. Uh, you have LFO 1 and LFO 2. You can select. You can select, uh, you can select where it affects, like the pitch, the amp, the oscillator mix, panning. Um, here are your waveforms you can pick. There's also three modes here. There's a trigger mode, a one-shot mode, and a global mode. So the trigger mode, uh, when it's set to trigger, the LFO cycle will restart each time you play a new note. The one-shot note means that the LFO cycle will only play once when you play a new note. And global, <coughs> excuse me, global cycle, like the LFO cycle won't restart when you have global mode selected. Sync will tempo sync to your BPM. You can adjust the rate. Uh, this frequency knob adjusts the rate of the LFO. The amount, phase, and fade in. Now the fade in knob only affects um, the trigger and the one-shot mode. So if you're in global mode, it won't be affected. This is your attack, decay, sustain, and release for your amp, as well as the main volume. Okay, um, we'll go into the, the different modes you can use with the synth. I'm going to zoom out so you can see. Okay, at the top here next to uh, where the preset is named, you can see a mode. Right now it says it's in poly mode. You can also change it to solo or in art. So there's three modes you can use with this synthesizer. Now when I have art mode selected, the arpeggiator will play. 
This arpeggiator is kind of like a step sequencer. Um, when I press a note, Okay, you can hear that the arpeggiator is playing. Um, there are nine steps, one to nine. You can add a step on the first tap here. You could copy it, you could delete it. Um, the second tap here is the action. So this is where you can decide uh, if you want nothing happening in your step. You can press play to play the step. Um, first, you could play the first step uh, previous is play the previous step and next is play the next step. You can adjust the voices over here if you see here. You can add more voices up to five. Also it allows you to transpose the note up and down. Over here on the third tab you can also have the note being held down or you can have it as glide. So for example you hear that now but when I add glide to step two I'm going to change the tempo so you can uh, hear it more clear. Um, how you adjust the tempo is this tab right here. So you can hear that uh, since I added a glide uh, function on the notes, it will glide every time it runs to the second step. So what it's doing is it's going from, uh, since I have restart selected here, it's running from step one all the way to step nine and all the way back, step one, step nine, and it's, it's going to keep looping. <clears throat> okay, uh, sort means, if you see here, there's a sort button. If I have that selected, uh, when it's on, the arpeggiator will ignore the order that I press the piano keys, and it's going to sort them ascending from one to nine. And this is simply where you adjust the tempo. Okay, uh, you have to press save in order to save your your ARP preset. I'm just going to go with ARP 1. Okay, you can also go to a library which has banks of different presets that you originally saved. Okay, um, next we're going to go into the effects. If you see here, um, I don't like the effects section because, uh, for example, you can see they kind of smashed everything and packed the distortion, the chorus, the EQ, and the phaser all into this little tab here. And they only give you two knobs, the, uh, the, right, the right and the left knob. And if you select distortion, the knobs will act as amount or dry wet. Chorus will act as depth and frequency. The EQ will be low and high. And they don't have mids, so I don't, kind of don't like that. And the phaser will be the depth and the frequency. That's the only thing I don't like about the effects. Other than that, it has the delay section, it has the reverb section here. Um, here are your parameters. You can also change the, the view. Say you're using, because this is core MIDI, you can connect a, you could connect a hardware MIDI keyboard controller. And so right now, you can see their keys at the bottom. But when I have dock selected, it gives you like a full screen of everything, including the effects, the LFOs, the filters, envelopes, oscillators, and the amp. So you can have that selected if you have like a hardware MIDI keyboard controller. Okay, um, for the effects section, if you see on the delay, there's the left and the right, feedback and the mix. You can also temp, uh, tempo sync it to the BPM. Cross kind of crosses the echoes uh, over from like, let's say you have the delay on the left, and you have cross selected, the echoes from the left side will cross on over to the right side. So that's a really cool feature that most synths, most um, ISO synths don't have. The reverb uh, is pretty standard. You have the pre delay, the size of the room, dry wetness, the low cut, high cut, high damp, and you simply turn on by pressing the on. Okay, uh, here are your parameters. Uh, the parameters allow you to adjust the key velocity value to the oscillator volume um, and both the filters cut off frequencies here. Also you can change the pitch range and the glissando time of your keys that's being pressed. Okay, so I almost forgot to go over through the top section of this app. The first tab you see here is the background audio. When I have it selected, you can see it's flashing, indicating that it's on. 
This allows Sunriser to be played in the background. The second tab here is the panic button. Just like all other iOS synths, if you have a note that's stuck or hanging, you can press panic to immediately stop everything from playing. The, thir the third tab here is the learn, uh, MIDI learn function. It allows you to select the region in the synthesizer and have it learn what you're doing on your external MIDI keyboard. Okay, the fourth tab is your settings. It's all the general settings are initialized. You can adjust the keys, the piano keys from small to medium to large. Also the knobs from linear to rotary. These settings are also in Arctic keys as well. And also your MIDI in input channels 1 to 16. Uh, what I don't like about uh, the recording tab here, uh, this is for recording. So what you do to record is you press start recording and it will flash indicating that's recording. But I don't like how all the recording settings are spread throughout this app. So for example, if you want to access a click, you have to go into the temple tab here and then press click to turn it on. And if you want to, say you want to start recording on the first note that you press, you have to go into utilities, settings, recording, and you have to select start on first touch. So I wish all the recording settings will be inside this recording tab, but life isn't fair. Okay, um, I went over earlier, these are your modes. You can select poly, solo, arp. This is your arp edit and your effects. Uh, that's basically it. When you record something, say, I'm just going to record that. You can play or you can save or you could audio copy it. Also, if you want to save a preset, you simply just press on this and then select save preset. You can also save uh, the lead or the key, the bass, the pad. You can save it as uh, whatever, whichever you like. You can also go back to the banks and select any preset that you saved previously. That's about it. If you have any questions or any comments, just send me a message. If you need any help, I'll always be glad to get back to you. Thanks for watching.